So what are event listeners? Well, event listeners are listening out to what the user is doing. This is how we create interactive pages. For example, we have a button and we wait until that button is clicked. And when the button is clicked, then we can run a function. So this is a really nice thing about JavaScript is we can wait for certain things to happen, wait for the user to press a button, press a key, mouse up, mouse down, and so on and so forth. We can wait for events to happen. And then once that event happens and is triggered, then we can run a function that we specify. We create that function and we say, if they click a button, I want to go ahead and perform an action. And that's how we create interactivity. So we're gonna start out with a very simple example. And we have a basic input right here. It's just a button with the value of click me. So we just have this nice little button right here and it doesn't have any functionality. But when I click on this button, what I want it to do is bring up an alert dialog box. So first of all, we haven't discovered how to create an alert dialog box in JavaScript, which is very easy to do. Just type in alert and then you want to pass in a string and this will show up inside of the alert dialog. So this is how easy it is to create an alert dialog box in JavaScript. So notice when I hit return and execute this command, an alert dialog box will show up and it has the string hello world inside of there. So that's nice and easy. That's how we create an alert dialog. Now I want to first of all target this DOM element right here. So the way I'm going to do it is via its ID. So this DOM element has an ID with the value of event click. So we know that we can target this specific element via its ID. So I can say document dot get element by ID. And we want to get the element, which is going to be event click. Now I want the console to print out a JavaScript object. So I'm going to wrap that inside of the dir function. And if we take a look at this now, here is the JavaScript object that represents this DOM element. And we can take a look at all of the events right here. And again, we can tell that these are events because they have the on word in front. So you have on focus, on error, and so forth. Now, most of these events may not even actually really apply to this element, but JavaScript does allow you to attach all of these events, but some of them won't apply. For example, you have, let's say, if we go down, you have, let's say, on play on pause and so forth. These right here are more for the HTML5 video element, but they are available on this button, but it's not really ideal. Those events won't be triggered on this type of element. So what you have to do is you have to look at the element and say, does it have that functionality? Can you play a button? No, you can't. Can you pause a button? No, you can't. So those events, you're better off just leaving null for this element. But for example, can you, let's say, on mouse down, so when I push my mouse down, is there an event triggered there? Yes. On mouse out, for example, and even on mouse over, if I hover my mouse over this button, yes, that could trigger an event. On mouse out is when I'm holding down, so the event won't trigger, and as soon as I release, then the on mouse out event will execute. So you have all of these events and you just need to look at those events and you need to decipher, can those events be triggered on this type of element? But we're gonna keep things real simple and we're just gonna go with the standard click event. So when the user clicks on this button, I want to trigger an event. So let's go ahead and take a look at the on click event which should be in here there it is on click now we know that this event isn't going to trigger on this particular element because its value is null right here so at the moment on click is not defined so let's go ahead and define this event 
So the first way of attaching an event listener is to attach it directly via this object right here. So I want to again target the document which is JavaScript's representation of a HTML file. We want to pull out a specific object to do with an element with the ID of event click which will return this object as we know. And then what I want to do is as we're working with an object now, so don't forget this is just pulling in this object. So we are working with an object. I can just say dot on click. Now I am targeting the on click property right here on this object. And I want to change this from a property because at the moment it's null, which means it contains a primitive, so it's a property. And I want to reassign the value to be a function. So now it's a method. And this is going to be triggered, this function right here will be triggered when we click on the button. So I'm just going to create an alert dialog. So I'm just going to say alert and then I'm going to say hello world. Very simple. So all I'm doing is I'm targeting that object. I'm targeting on click and I'm reassigning the value. So I'm deleting that null value and assigning a function in its place. And this function is simply going to open up an alert dialog. So now let's go ahead and pull up this object again. So I'm just going to do it in the dir function, don't forget. So I get an interactive list. And if I scroll down and we go to on click, you will notice it is in fact a function right there. So let's see if this function executes when we click. So I'm going to click on the button and there you go. You now have an alert dialog box and it has the string hello world. That's exactly what I told the function to do. So this is one way of adding an event listener. Now there is another way that adds an event listener natively. And this is ideally the way you should do it. Not this way, but by using the add event listener method. So what I want to do is refresh the page. And now what I'd like to do is print out the object again to do with this input element that we have, this button. And you'll notice that dot on click or the on click property will have the value of null. Likewise, I can just say, you know, go grab that property and return the value, for example, dot on click. And that will tell me if that particular key name stores any values, which at the moment is only storing a null value. So now when I click, nothing will happen. All those events have been completely removed or that particular event has been removed. But what I want to do now is add an event listener natively. So again, we do exactly the same thing. Whenever you want to work with a specific element, you first need to target the object that resembles that element in the DOM. And then you need to say add event listener. And then we need to pass in some parameters to this method. Now again, be very, very careful here. Event must have a capital E and L must be capitalized as well. And then we need to first of all pass in a string. Now we don't say on click anymore. That is the property name on this object. That is a key name on this object. However, when you want to add an event listener, just omit the on. So get rid of on. And then you're just left with the actual event name, which is click. So you can have a look through all those different events that you can apply and just omit the on word in front of it. So that's the first parameter, which says that's the event that we want to add, a click event. Next, we need to define a second parameter. So we need to put a comma in here. And then we need to define the function, which again, this is going to be the function that is invoked, is executed when that event is triggered. So let's go ahead and create an alert dialog box with the value of hello world. Exactly as we had before. And if I go ahead and click, you will notice that it shows up here. There's the alert dialog box that I told it to bring up when this event was triggered and it has the string hello world inside of it. Now the difference is let's go and take a look at our object 
that resembles this DOM element. So again, I'm just going to put that into the DIR function to get an interactive list. And we scroll down, and on click is null. Now that's kind of strange because last time it was a function, and we knew that when we clicked it, that function got invoked. So where exactly has this event listener right here added this function? Well, the simple answer is you can't actually look at this particular event because it's managed by the native code. Now, how do I know that? Well, the simple answer is I'm going to target the add event listener, but this time I'm not actually going to invoke this function. So don't forget, this right here is a function, the add event listener function but I don't want to invoke it. Now in JavaScript, what you can do is say, no, don't invoke it, don't run it. Rather, if you don't include those brackets, as you know, it will return the function text. So we can actually look at the function itself in syntax. Now you will notice something quite strange here. It gives you the function name, add event listener. Yes, that's fine. But wait a minute, what's this? This is native code. This means that this function is actually running code in terms of the JIT compiler, it's actually in the programming language of the compiler, which is a lower level language, such as CPP. If you don't know what I'm talking about right here, don't worry about it. It's native code that you can't look at in JavaScript. So those instructions are written in a different language, essentially. So what happened with our event listener? Well, this event was actually attached natively. So that's different. Before I was attaching an event directly on the object itself and we saw that function but now this is actually being handled by the native JIT compiler so we can't actually look at our event now in an actual sense of you know printing out an object and looking at where that function was produced this is all being managed natively and therefore that's why we don't have the on click property right here set to any value. It's still set to null. This is a different way of attaching an event listener. But however, this is recommended because this is faster. So when we run, so when I executed this line of code, what it did was it told the JIT compiler, I want you to manage this function right here because what it did was it took this function and it converted it into native bytecode. And so that means the function has been interpreted and it's waiting for that click event to trigger. And so this is all happening in the native side, which is quicker. Whereas if we were to attach that function to the key name on click, well, when the button is clicked, it goes to this object. It takes a look at that on click key name and it sees if it stores a function. If it does, then it takes that function, it then compiles the function and runs the function. However, this way means that the function is already in native bytecode, so it's executing a lot quicker. And when you have hundreds of events on a page that could be triggering loads and loads and loads of times, thousands of times, then having your code already compiled, having that function ready and compiled and waiting to be executed is a lot faster. Now also, there is another benefit to adding an event listener. And that is if you take a look at the on click property, this key right here, and you let's say populate that key with a function turning it into a method, then you can only have one function in that key, which means you can only have one function that executes when the button is clicked. However, in the case of the add event listener, you can actually have multiple events. So here's the first one that we added, which was a function that brings up an alert dialog. Now let's go ahead and add another event listener. And again, it's going to be the same one, click. And then we're going to run another function and this time we're going to create another alert dialog, which is going to be another dialog like so. So now we're going to have two alert dialog boxes when we click on this button. So this function right here does not override or get rid of this function. In fact, they are both compiled in memory. So let's take a look at this now. Click me. We have the first alert dialog, this one right here, and then another alert dialog. 
that came from this function down here. So you can have multiple functions that are attached to a single event on one single element, like so. Now I'd also like to show you how to remove events as well. But unfortunately in this case, I can't actually remove those events. So this is the danger of using the add event listener. And that is the fact that what I've done is I've added anonymous functions. So again, these are functions without names. So this function has no name. I can't physically call it back. And the issue with adding anonymous functions or even inline functions with your event listeners is the fact that you won't be able to remove those functions. You need to be able to reference those functions. So we must create the function outside of the event listener because if I was to simply target the element and say remove event listener and again event needs the capital E and listener needs a capital L and if I was to say well just go ahead and remove all of the click functions for example no nah, it's still there so we can't actually do it and you do have to define the name of the function that you want to get rid of and again this has to be a pointer in memory in javascript so you need to be able to point to it make a reference to it which in this case we can't actually do because we have an anonymous function and likewise even if i was to give the function a name and you couldn't just say remove event listener and then put a comma in there and then type in name it still wouldn't work so what you need to do is make sure that this function right here is not actually written in the add event listener method. What you need to do is reference it. So that function needs to be declared outside of the add event listener method. So let's go ahead and refresh the page and start again. And what I want to do is create a function now this is a globally accessible function so this function will be stored within a key name in our window object don't forget what happens here if i create a global function so i'm going to say global function event clicker and then i'm going to open and close the brackets and open and close the parentheses and the execution context is just going to be one command which is an alert dialog box hello world now it will create a key in the window object and this key will be called event clicker and that is a function there we go so this is a named function we can reference this function so what i can do now is target my dom element and then i can add an event listener and again the first parameter is what event would you like well at the moment we've got nothing right now as you can see so I'm going to add a click event and now I'm not going to write an inline function that will be anonymous and be impossible to remove. So what I want to do is reference it. Well, I can reference it by its name event clicker. So if I just say event clicker right here, what it's going to do is JavaScript is pretty smart. It can say, right, this to me looks like a global accessible key name which event clicker is in essence a key name and it's going to go to the window object and look at the event clicker key and it will find a function and that function will then be attached to this dom element and when the user clicks on that dom element that function will in fact be invoked so if hit return now you can see that yes it was attached correctly and now we have a reference to this function so now I can say remove event listener and again I need to specify the type first and foremost so the type is again the click event because I added it under click so I'm removing it under click and then you need to specify the function name you want to remove which now we haven't got an anonymous function or an inline function with a name again that won't work you need to create the function first and then reference it and now when I click, boom, the event no longer triggers. So again, target the DOM element or the object that resembles the DOM element and then either add an event or remove an event. And please make sure that those functions that you're passing in are able to be referenced. So there you go. Go ahead and start playing around with event listeners and adding interactivity to your page.